Hey folks, welcome back to Honey Money SG and this is the next episode of Talking To Myself and today let's talk about the Singapore debt trap. Now what is the debt trap is that essentially you are going to keep constantly working to source for money because you have so many liabilities in life right that's why you have to be constantly working to find avenues for money to fund your purchases over the long term and why is that the trap is because if one day you decided to stop working then you no longer have any sources of income that could fund your debt right so you have to be stuck in this cycle forever that's why it's called a trap so let's start off with the first debt trap which is university tuition fee loans now if i look at this nus admission fees for these semesters right they come at around eight thousand dollars to nine point five thousand dollars per year depending on which course you were in right so let's just take the median course fees to be around nine thousand singapore dollars a year so multiply that by four years assuming that you're going to do an honors year right that will be around thirty six thousand singapore dollars for a four-year course of study and most of the tuition fee loans in singapore are actually charging around five percent of effective interest rate after you have completed your course of study so during your course of study is mostly interest free so assuming that we could work and pay off our loans during our course of study so that there are no interest involved that means you need to earn at least nine thousand dollars a year right so if we divide that by 12 nine thousand divided by 12 that means you need at least 750 dollars a month which is rather manageable if you did some part-time jobs i mean it is best if your parents can support you uh, because i believe as a parent i think it's your responsibility to at least raise your kid to the age where he could find a proper full-time job so i think if your parents can support your tuition fee loans that would be really good either by cash or by cpf but if they are not able to then at least you can take on some part-time jobs i mean since you're able to make it to university right most likely you have some academic knowledge and you could use that to your advantage to go and give some tuition at a fee and they charge at around 30 40 50 dollars right depending on what level you teach so that is a way to actually fund your tuition fees so that you don't get spiraled into these tuition fee loans and becoming the first stage of your debt trap otherwise i feel that if you're really entrepreneurial and you want to start your own business and maybe you want to drop out of school to focus full time on your business right i think that is also an option considering that you have enough financial backing and security behind you but that is definitely not the safe path that everyone wants you to take right because in singapore we are all accustomed to this very safe route of going through university and finding a full-time job so you definitely have to consider the risks versus the rewards there so let's move on to the next debt trap which is your wedding expenses now we all know that wedding is a very expensive affair especially for chinese in singapore right because a lot of parents right i'm talking about the parents not the kids the parents really want some face value that means they need to have the grandest wedding be in the nicest hotels receive the greatest number of gifts and invite the most number of people to their wedding banquet and i think that is just a very sickening thing that i see in this society because isn't the happiness of the couple based on how much they love each other rather than how much they can provide for each other's families so for wedding expenses we cannot run away from the proposal ring which is also known as the diamond ring right we have the wedding bands we have some chinese customaries and even some people need to pay dowry and most importantly is the wedding banquet right depending on how big you want that event to be and even wedding photo shoots are super expensive upwards of four thousand dollars per shoot so a bare minimum estimate for a chinese wedding is around ten thousand dollars to twenty over thousand dollars depending on the skill you want it to be but in fact love is not measured by how much money you actually have it's actually measured by how much you really love each other right so if you take up all the bare bones right you only need 42 dollars for the registry of marriage certificate that certifies you are legally married to your spouse so if both of you could really do away with all the customaries and all the wedding banquet right i think it's a good option to really be more minimalistic especially now that in covid we cannot invite so many people and most of the time it really stresses the couples out right because there's so much planning to do so why not just take it a little bit more minimalistic reduce some of the costs and less stress less decision making to be done and don't ever use that for your wedding expenses i think that's the most ridiculous if you are not able to achieve that level of spending then obviously you do not have the means to go and plan such a grand wedding right just to impress your friends your relatives and your family members i think overall 
it's going to look really bad on you when you cannot afford to pay back the loan. But you know, if you do not have enough money for wedding expenses, you can start saving slowly, right? And one of the ways is to actually go and open a Tiger and Moomoo Brokers account so that you can get one free Apple stock worth up to $200 SGD. And once you get the Apple stock, you can sell it away for $200 each, right? So you get one share from each Tiger and Moomoo and then now you have total of $400. Refer link in my description and pin comment below. Now let's talk about the next debt, right? Housing debt. Now housing is definitely a good debt because we definitely need a roof over our heads and i think for property buying a property for own stay is justifiable and very essential especially in singapore because we do have a lot of benefits especially for public housing right as singaporean citizens and prs more so for the bto flats which are heavily subsidized by the government right because it offers really good quality flats at really affordable prices especially for non-mature estates so if we are looking at a four-room flat in a non-mature estate it is around 360,000 Singapore dollars. Now this is excluding other kind of housing grants and other additional fees and stamp duties that you may have to pay but let's just keep it simple that way. Of course you could also take a look at my other BTO videos on my channel because I've done up quite a lot of BTO reviews in the past right. Now so let's say if you need to pay the 10% down payment which is $36,000 out of 360k right you still need to finance the rest of the 90% via a mortgage loan and usually the mortgage loan is Singapore is around 1.6% right now for private bank loans but let's take the upper limit right using the CPF OA loan which is at 2.6% so if you plug that number into the HDB mortgage calculator your monthly installment is around $1,470 which is quite manageable if we divide by two people right each person just cough out around $750 per month I think that is a relatively manageable expense to afford for your own stay property. Now this is assuming that you really buy an affordable flat within your means because $360,000 may seem like a really low amount for people to buy their flats because people all want mature flats, high floor, right? Super good amenities nearby. So these flats are especially in mature estates. Like these few flats right here. I think they will cost around six hundred dollars to 700000 for a four-room flat, which is easily double the mortgage payment, right? So we are looking at around one point five k per person per month. I think that's too much unless you are really a high-income earner. So just spend within your means, especially for homestay property. Now, once you have bought your property, most likely you will need to do some basic renovation, right? And that's where another debt trap comes in because you look at so many videos on stack homes and CNA Insider and you aspire to be like them right impressing your family impressing your relatives impressing your friends having that really nice interior design and it will kind of hurt you in the wrong run because now supply chain disruption all the raw materials are so expensive and even the cost of labor is increasing as well because we have limited supply pool during this covid crunch so renovation is definitely going to be very expensive during this whole covid saga period if you're just looking at basic forum interior design and renovation right i think a good number to hit will be around $25,000. That's just the bare minimum, right? Doing up some of the carpentry, basic carpentry for your kitchen, your master bedroom, and some of the living room spaces. Now, this is excluding furniture and appliances because I don't know how much quality you need and those can range really high as well but we're just looking at renovation of the house so if we need a more comfortable budget that will be around forty thousand dollars for a comfortable living space right twenty five thousand is just like bare minimum super bare minimum forty thousand is more realistic if you want like a comfortable living quality and you know i watched a few of those videos right for home renovation on youtube they cost like what eighty thousand to hundred thousand dollars and then they hack away one of the bedrooms effectively from four room flat become a three room flat even though they have a much bigger bedroom now but i feel that not necessary uh. it's not going to be your ultimate home right unless this is going to be your last home that you're going to stay till the end of your life if not i feel that's too extravagant because there are always opportunities to upgrade to a bigger flat in future and if you front load so much renovation expenses when you're young right and you have lower income i feel that you will really cripple your early retirement dream and you definitely do not want to take on the renovation loan because the effective interest rate from what i searched in sing saver is more than five percent 
okay so that is not a good debt that you want to hold so don't fall into this renovation debt trap now lastly is definitely on car loans which is the worst debt trap that you could ever have in Singapore and I feel that a lot of people actually aspire to have cars or to be driving one because they felt that car is a status symbol in Singapore I mean our certificate of entitlement or COE for cars just hit a record high of over 60,000 Singapore dollars that lasts you for 10 years right now that is additional on top of your vehicle price right so if your vehicle is around 50,000 dollars you need to pay 60,000 plus 50,000 that is 110,000 Singapore dollars just to own a car for 10 years huh? so essentially you have to identify whether the car is a need or a want because if you need it for your job especially you're doing a sales role and you need to meet clients all over the island right then I think that's quite justifiable and most likely as a sales employee you will have some car allowance from the company so that can help to offset some of your car expenses or let's say you have elder family members who need to frequently make trips to the hospital or medical centers for checkups and consultation then I think it's more convenient to drive them um, because it may be really difficult to get a car for them likewise for young kids right you need ferry them to schools to really far-flung locations or for work in really remote areas then I think a car is justifiable that way but if you're working in the CBD the city area where public transport is so convenient unless you're really a high income earner I don't really see a need for a car in Singapore when public transport options are so widely available and convenient and also if you know of the car loan interest rate effective it's around more than 5% which is a bad debt as well because the loan balance does not reduce right it's based on your original principle so it will be a really high interest rate not as what they advertise like 2 plus percent so I would say in order to comfortably own a car in Singapore you must be ready to shelf out around 1.8 thousand dollars to 2.5 thousand Singapore dollars right a month to actually go and maintain and upkeep your car now that includes your car park fees your petrol fees your car loans your insurance your maintenance and all the other stuff that I have not talked about so really for cars it's really simple decide whether it's a need or one and then work towards that if you really need the car then be ready to shelf out at least another two thousand dollars just to finance your car i mean if you are good at side hustles just get a side hustle that could earn you around two thousand dollars a month then you could be comfortable in maintaining that car so i went through all the singapore debt traps right like the university fees the wedding fees the housing fees renovation the car loans and you really do not want to fall into these debt traps because once you finish one trap you have to consider the next trap and it keeps on going in life and you'll forever not hit your early retirement so I'll share with you how I plan to do my early retirement in this video over here so you can really take a look and plan to strategize your life with that video and so thank you for watching my name is Christopher this is Honey Money Ashi steering young adults to financial independence